Permits check, the people pass on. Appearances may be deceptive. Arms, drugs, other forms of contraband have to be searched for, and the people have to submit. The customs man is firm and polite. He chats with the newcomers, seeking also a trace of that distant Shanghai accent that will betray a man or woman, a communist agent with no rightful business in peaceful Hong Kong. Last come the Europeans. They have waited while the Chinese pass through. Some are those who have suffered at the hands of communists, traders who for months have been trying to get away, missionaries who have been tortured and humiliated, people who count themselves lucky to see the outside world again. They've filed across, freedom in front of them. Then comes the reaction, and many of them break down. Like the Chinese before them, they pass through checks and customs then move on to the waiting train. It's 30 miles on to Hong Kong, first by train and then by boat to the city itself, the nearest place to home. Hong Kong remains a contact point between East and West, a halfway mark between Vladivostok and Singapore. It remains a meeting place a half-open door between communist China and the world that free men know.